everybody, Paul Brooks here with you again for another B-Movie Mania interview. And we are doing something a little bit different today. Eddie Brandt's Saturday Matinee is a legendary video store here in Los Angeles. And it's one of my favorite places in town. So I was in the store the other day talking with Tony Natoli, who's one of the longtime staff members there, and Donovan Brandt, who is the owner and the son of Eddie Brandt. And I asked them if I could bust out the podcast mic and just chat with them for a couple minutes about the store. And they said, sure, why not? So you're going to hear me start talking with Tony at the beginning, and then Donovan comes over to the front of the store and starts chatting with us as well. Eddie Brandt's is an amazing place. It's well known here to cinephiles and even big time filmmakers like Tarantino and P.T. Anderson. So if you're ever in the LA area, put this place on your list and make sure you check it out. Let's get to the interview. Here's my chat with Tony and Donovan from Eddie Brandt's Saturday Matinee. It's B-Movie Mania. Mania. Tony, thanks for chatting with me. Yep. Welcome to this little podcast we got called B-Movie Mania. Great to be here. Well, welcome to Eddie Brandt's. Uh, thank where, you. Where you're standing. <laughs> <laughs> it's one of my pl- favorite places in all of Los Angeles, truly. Yeah. So I'm really happy to be chatting with you for a couple minutes. Start me off just by telling me who Eddie is and how this place got started, how old it is, you know, all that all that stuff. I think the, well, Eddie, uh, he's passed on now, died in 2011, but Eddie Brandt uh, was a musician, played with the Spike Jones band, um, had his own band in Hawaii, was it, Donovan? Sorry. <laughs> yeah, he was the head of the house band at the Royal Hawaiian Hotel, and they can usually hear me in Iowa from wherever I talk. <laughs> um, and then he... Uh, got skirted out of there because that's when they they didn't want white people anymore they wanted the don ho's and the real native hawaiians to be the uh because i think don ho replaced my dad for the band at the royal hawaiian hotel but yeah he was there for a while then he came back and worked at hanna barbera he wrote a bunch of cartoons for him he invented uh, the impossibles that was the rock group superhero band for hanna barbera back in the 60s wow. and my mom was an animator she did scooby-doo and johnny quest and the flintstones and that's where my parents met, that's and my cool. aunt and uncle. And we called her Grandma Ginny, but I think she's like my third great aunt or something like that. She's not really my grandma. But uh, yeah, they all worked at Hanna-Barbera there. And then, oh, I guess since he's passed away, never good to say anything. I mean, Bob Clampett took my dad's name off the credits of all the Beanie and Cecil cartoons, which my dad wrote all of them. And he had to sue Bob Clampett because cartoon writers weren't allowed in the writers guild back then and so he had to do that all on his own and he says screw this i'm starting my own business and they started this yes so So when was that about that was uh that probably started in 67 68 and we opened january 1st 1969 and you guys have been in the same location no this is our third location okay we used to be over on colfax Then we were over on Lancashire was our first location right across the street from the Debbie Reynolds Dance Studio. And the Debbie Reynolds Dance Studio at that time was the post office for the entire valley. I mean, that was the only post office in the valley, but that was a million years ago. And yeah, so he um, we bought out two uh, poster archives from National Screen Service way back in the day. If you had a theater. If whatever films you're getting in, you would send a list to National Screen and they would send you the posters and the lobby cards and the photographs to, to decorate the lobby of your theater. And then, even though there were MGM theaters, there were Warner Brothers theaters, there were Universal theaters, there were blah blah theaters, movie theaters were somehow deemed a monopoly. And that's what really screwed up the movie theater business. I mean... They were competing against television in the 50s, but they never really had any problem. So all these theaters closed down, national screens closed down, and we bought out the Shreveport, Louisiana poster exchange, and then the Portland, Oregon poster exchange, and we literally bought it for scrap paper. It cost more to ship it back here in two train box cars than it did to actually buy the junk. But, you know, that's where we got all the photographs and negatives and posters and blah, 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 blah. 
And uh, yeah, we've been doing that for 51 years now. Wow. So the podcast is called B-Movie Mania. We're all about cult cinema and just weird stuff. And obviously you guys have a ton of stuff here uh, that caters to guys like me. So do you guys have any personal favorites here that uh, you've seen over the years of working here in terms of B-movies and that sort of thing that are personal favorites of yours? Well, I love the Charlie Chan films, that's for sure. Uh, they don't run those on TV anymore because, you know, we got a white guy playing Charlie Chan, but we got real Asians playing his kids, and I don't see what the big deal is. He's the smartest guy in the room because a buddy of mine just went to a thing at the Cecil B. DeMille barn, and somebody just came out with a book you know, white people depicting Asians in film, or maybe it was just bad depictions of Asians in film. And I'm like, when you watch the Charlie Chan films, it's William Demarest and the other guys that are the dumb Irish cops that are effing boobs. And Charlie Chan's always the smartest guy in the room. And he's a great dad, treats his kids well, loves his kids, his kids love him. I don't really see what the problem with the Charlie Chan films are, but I love Formula Detective. I mean, Charlie Chan is basically Murder, She Wrote, you got 12 people in a house, a dead guy, all 12 of them wanted him dead, and you just got to figure out who ponied up the moxie to actually do it, and, uh, but, yeah, I, I love those, and I love all kinds of stuff, but, yeah, I love, old B movies are my favorite. Tony, what about you? Same thing, I like old B movies, I like, I've been, like, last night I was watching something called Girl Gang, which seems like an Ed Wood movie, but it's not, but there's, you know, it's like one of those real low-budget, uh, Independent studios of, of that day, um, old uh, bad like Reptilicus. I was watching. That's a great one. You know, bad uh, horror. Great piece of cheese. Yeah, sci-fi uh, things from the fifties. Yeah. Just I, I like a lot of bad stuff. I like a lot of uh, I like films that were meant to be better and they failed. <laughs> I like that. I don't want. I don't like uh, films that are trying to be. Uh, bad, right. you know, like the trauma type films yeah, that are, sure. I like films that they think that they're really going to make something good and they've just I'm dropped the ball. <laughs> and did you guys growing up sort of, you know, grow up watching a lot of B movies and stuff like that when you were younger as well? Well, we, when we had an addition built onto our house in 1973. We had a little loft, and it's got four little holes in it. Two holes you stick 16 millimeter projectors in, and shines on the outside screen. And then the other two windows are so you can be a projectionist and actually keep it in focus. But when I was a kid, like Leonard Moulton was a regular at our film parties back in the day, and not to mention a whole bunch of other folks, but. There'd usually be about 12 or 15 people uh, every Saturday night, and there were some people that only showed up twice a year, some people showed up four or five times a year, and then there were the people that were there damn near every Saturday. But one night we were running movies, and there were like 50 people there, and I'm like, damn, everybody showed up on the same night. And we were watching John Ford's Stagecoach, and some guy named Yakima Canut was there. And he's the stunt man. He did the chariot race in Ben-Hur. He choreographed all that. But he's the stuntman who climbs up on the horses, gets dragged under the horses, dragged under the stagecoach, and climbs back up on. And that's what they did the scene from Raiders of the Lost Ark with him going under the truck. That's basically a remake of that. But we watched the movie, and then everybody's asking questions, and I realize... Oh, this is the guy that really, for real, I mean, because it's supposed to be John Wayne, but John Wayne didn't get dragged under the stagecoach. Yeah, come on, Canuck did. And he was really the premier stuntman. And yeah, so we always had, I mean, I thought, I thought everybody swam in Burt Reynolds' swimming pool when they were kids. And, <laughs> uh, you know, uh, got to go to Billy Barty's house for holidays. And it was normal for you. Yeah, well, I mean, I'm like, oh, doesn't everybody watch old movies on Saturday night? And, you know. A lot of the stars come by and watch them and stuff like that. But you find out, no, everybody's talking about, you know, what the equivalent of Friends was so the next day at school. Yeah. It's like, oh, no, we watched Stagecoach last night. And, Consider uh, me jealous because that sounds pretty fun. Yeah, that was, that, was, uh, yeah that was a lot of fun. That's awesome. Um, you guys have a couple movies right here in front. Uh, correct me if I'm wrong, but these are movies that were shot here. 
One yes. of them was. The other one, uh, the uh, Satanic Panic was not shot here, but she's a customer, and uh, oh, okay. and she made a VHS for us. So yeah. Beyond the Gates. Beyond the that Gates was shot, shot here. Yeah, and I've seen this one, actually. Barbara Crampton's in it, and it's pretty cool. Um, so what, what goes into, you know, if people come in and they want to shoot a movie here, how does that normally work? They usually say to one of us that, uh, hey, we're looking to shoot a movie here, and I always say yes, pretty much. So, uh, yeah. <laughs> It's, uh, yeah, it's not too hard. Not a lot of paperwork. I mean, uh, I do like it when AFI comes because, you know, they're teaching them how to do it right. So, man, they got to get insurance and blah, blah, and this and that. And the only thing I don't like about AFI is all the freaking paperwork that I got to fill out and countersign with it. But I'm just kidding. They, they prep it all for me so that I just got to sign on the dotted line, sign on the dotted line, sign on the dotted line. And you know what? It's never a dotted line. It's always a straight, straight line. line yeah. sign on. Why do they say sign on the dotted I line? I think there was a dotted line at one time. <laughs> uh, there's some other stuff that's been... I know that last year I popped in here at some point and there was a bunch of, there's like a food truck and a bunch of tables set up outside. That so, was probably the craft service. Yeah. Right. They, they were shooting here. And sometimes they'll shoot outside and sometimes they'll shoot inside or, or they'll, sometimes they'll do both. Yeah, they'll rent the store like, well, we don't want customers walking around, so then they'll, we'll have the place closed down. You gotta pay more for that. Yes. Yeah. Yeah, if they don't mind phones ringing in the backyard and stuff, you get a better rate. But, yeah. Um, yeah. So is that something that you guys have sort of incorporated into your into the business or is it just if people pop in just people pop in people it's, pop been, in. Yeah. it's usually word of mouth but i mean like afi has us on their location yeah. list and i think ucla has us on their location list also because they've shot a number of things here and it just happened also because we're one of the last video, video stores, stores yeah. because for a while when there were other video stores they would court like a few of us and then nobody would call us when they decided not to use us <laughs> yeah and we already had mentally spent the money <laughs> you know so that sucks but now it's narrowed it down now if they need a video store chances are they're going to use us right us or cinephile right right yeah yeah, so speaking of, I mean, obviously, video stores have gone the way of the dodo. Any secrets that you want to share as to how you guys managed to stay here and have been here for, for so long? Well, because I don't care what Netflix says, and don't get me wrong, I enjoy watching Netflix, and I like the way it works. When you're binge-watching TV, as soon as the end credits start, man, you go right to the next episode, and you don't have to watch previously on because you just seen it so they cut right to past the opening credits does make it easy but man i got eighty thousand titles here and yeah. i got stuff that's never been released on blu-ray never been released on dvd uh and not only that i mean i will say the netflix and even your spectrum guide whatever oh if you like this you might also like this and well, even though that might be about a girl trying to find her way home, these movies are nothing similar. And if you like this, you're probably going to hate this. That's a computer algorithm that. But, we do that, right? But, but if you like this, you maybe you'll try in that. And you got super nerds like the three of us, then you get real recommendations. Yeah. And I mean, I'm one fine. of the reasons I think why really? Quentin Tarantino makes such movies that he, that everybody <laughs> loves is he worked in a video store for five years dude i love this movie oh really what'd you love about it and he's a movie nerd so when people say oh i love this about it i love this about it it's not that some girl was trying to find her way home it was that she was driving a 67 charger and she was blazing across route 66 i mean whatever there's more nuances to why people do and do not like things right and that's why it's it's better to talk to people uh, I think. I yep. mean, Absolutely. It's, and, you know, it was, okay, like back in the days when you had to frickin' Vaseline yourself to get in here. I will say it's slowed down a little, but, yeah, we ain't going nowhere. <laughs> but some guy, brand new guy, comes in, and he's talking to my mom, and he's like, look, I'm embarrassed to tell you that this is why I'm here, and this is what I'm looking for. But there was this movie I saw when I was 12, and blah, blah, blah. No BS. Somebody on the other side of the counter was renting that movie that he had come in to get. And he says, oh, this is your first time here? No, you take it. I'll get it when you bring it back. But he was like, oh, I'm embarrassed to say. And it's like, you ain't got to be embarrassed. That guy's getting it because I don't know if he saw it when he was 12 or not, but he wants to see it now. And he's your age and it's all good. But, um, That's yeah, awesome. it's, it's the unfortunate thing about the home video business is, is that's why I 
dislike going to movie theaters now because everybody's used to watching a movie in their freaking living room. Hey, get me a beer. Hey, Steve. Hey, shut your freaking mouth. I just paid $15 to see this without parking, without soda pop, without they got their phones. Whatever. They, they got, got their, their phones, phones going. They got this. This isn't your living room. Shut your pile. Yeah. Close your glowing device. Um, they want to take a picture of the screen to show up everybody on I want social one media of those, that they're watching I want a movie instead of watching a movie. That Tom Cruise had in the first Mission Impossible movie where you turn it on and nobody's cell phone will work for like yeah. a, a 50 foot radius. That would be nice when you go to. Uh, because uh, this is an audio only podcast. Uh, if you're not in Los Angeles and you've never been to Eddie Brandt's, truly you have to come in because it is an incredible place. You know, you said 80,000 titles. Yeah. Even when blockbusters and family videos and all that were, were popular and still going, there was truly nothing like this. I mean, it's a u unique place. Yeah. So I certainly do hope that you guys stick around for a very long time and you're not going anywhere anytime hey, soon. Hey, you said the way of the dodo. The last dodo, if it was alive, would have so much attention, <laughs> make so much money. So let's hope with the last dodo. Absolutely. Uh, I can't let you guys go without asking you about the donuts. Every time I come in here, I'm surprised actually because well, it's there's a Saturday. Donuts, that's only a Saturday. Thing. Oh, okay. I'd like to tell you I do that every day. So every but, Saturday there's donuts. Uh, and and don't get me wrong, I love Hostess. I mean, I go to a donut store and it ain't five plain cakes and this. No, no, quality merchandise. We only variety. And yeah. I'm sure there's people that would eat the coconut covered glazed donuts but i hate coconut so i never get coconut donuts just in case the last donut of the day is the one for me i don't want to be stuck with no coconut donut but no we get the jellies the cream filled the cinnamon rolls the maple bar chocolate bars i could talk about donuts all day yeah Trust me. yes it's good stuff and tony you're always pushing the donuts on people well because then at the end of the day Look, at the end we of the end day, up eating them we end up <laughs> taking them and you know it's not like i don't pick one out of the box yeah. first thing in the morning or maybe yeah i eat two a donut out of the but box i don't want to first bring thing them in the home. morning yeah but i don't need to bring no nine donuts home because then i'll eat them at like three in the morning and i'll be like they got a donut very in rarely are there nine donuts left at the end of the day once in a while there might be one or yeah. two but they, yeah they they go and i gotta tell you last saturday and they were gone by 1 o'clock. Yeah, they well, went usually quick. by 3.30. Oh, we're down to the last two. But, uh, man, they were gone at 1 last week. And you guys still have uh, you have regulars that pop in here. Yeah, Peter Pretty. Fleischner. Peter's he's a regular. He's been coming, coming here. Since the last location. You were coming to Colfax. Yes? Yeah. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Hell yeah. I was coming to Colfax. I saw a strange movie last night. What's Not that? last night. It was on Sunday at somebody else's house. It was called The Joker. Oh, you saw the Joker. Yes. What's well, a new movie? It's bizarre. That's all I can say. <laughs> I gotta tell you, I took it home ten days ago, and I still haven't seen it. I know I'm not gonna like it because no. there's no Joker without the Batman. I don't care right. what anybody's well, yeah. like. Because I, I have knuckleheads like my sister Holiday, who doesn't know jack s about comic books. Oh no! But I says, there's no Joker without the Batman. Okay. Well, <laughs> So you can have Batman that. fighting different criminals or nondescript criminals, but uh, they had a Catwoman movie. Uh, you mean that Halle Berry yes. piece of turd? <laughs> yes. Okay. And didn't she get an Academy Award after she made that movie? Because that really, she should have well, been she didn't banned. Get for that. No, 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 no. But I mean, once you made the Catwoman, you're never going to be nominated for an Academy Award. I don't give a crap what you Yeah. Do. No offense. <clears throat> That's a cult movie right there. I think that's Catwoman. Is movie. it really? Yeah, I mean, because it's one of those ones. Oh yeah, that's so bad. yeah. Sharon Stone well, getting the, a good cat fight. Yeah. The movie yeah. Cats. I bet you people will love that years from now because there's so much just negative um, press on that. Yeah. that it's got to be that's one of those cult. Bad yeah. Film, I'm that's sure, probably going to be something I'll enjoy. Yeah. 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 We actually uh, right before Christmas went and, and saw it and reviewed it for the podcast. Actually. Yeah. So, it is a. It's an interesting experience. For sure. <laughs> it's a complete train wreck. Okay, cool. Yeah. Then I, then I will have to see that yeah. when we get it. And it's it definitely out. one where they were doing the best they could yeah. to make a good movie, and just every decision they made was the wrong decision. <laughs> so. <laughs> and you got an account here, right? I do. Yeah. Okay, because if you like, why don't you check out on the house the Beatniks, which is a movie me and uh, my dad and Paul Freeze made. Okay. And they made that in like three days. And then, I don't know if you ever watched any of the old Bowery Boys movies. Oh, but I don't, I don't in know. Blues Busters, um, Satch 
gets a feather stuck in his throat, and all of a sudden he sounds like Bing Crosby. But the two songs he sings in that movie, my dad wrote for him to sing for that wow. movie. But yeah, yeah, man, yeah. And uh, just a little oddity sidebar for yeah. Eddie Brandt stuff. And well, I'd love to. He wrote all the Spike Jones TV shows back in the day. Is it on, um, uh, were we talking VHS? I think Blues Busters we have on... I know we have Beatniks on DVD. Beatniks we is might on have DVD. Blues Busters only on VHS, I'm not sure. But I transferred it to DVD. Well, I got... And, uh, yeah. I got... The, the VCR oh, right running. On. I got the laser disc player if Ooh, I need to. Got a, <laughs> so. And God, do I love laser discs? And I'm sorry, <laughs> they look better than DVDs. I says, you think you can get more information on a disc 12 inches across or on a disc four and a half inches? Yeah. Across? Well, there's a there's a lot of proponents of that still. Who yeah. you know, big big laser disc fans out there. So, uh, well, guys, I appreciate it very much. Okay. Thank you for chatting with me. Yeah, no problem. And uh, thank con- you. Continued, continued success with the store in the future. Come in Saturday. Come Take in Saturday. a donut. Yeah. 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 Come in early. And you can see a nice selection of donuts. Will do. Thanks, guys. That's great. Thank you. Yeah. I will take you up on. Yeah, yeah. Once, uh, do we have Blues Busters and Beatniks? Blues Busters is on tape. Beatniks okay. is once I get Beatniks. One six six five. Listen up, maniacs. Do you have a question or a comment? Would you like to uh, send some bourbon to Uncle Lloydie? You can contact the gang on Facebook at B-Movie Mania. You can also drop them a line at bmoviemania.com. Reach out. Touch them. They are touching themselves. And they might just reach back. I'm Lloyd Kaufman saying... See you next time on B-Movie Mania. Woohoo!